Well, I can't believe it. It already failed. It seems like one of my caps have opened. The voltage on this side is a little low. I guess the only thing next to do is to hang a scope on to confirm it. I did such a good job insulating the diodes, it's hard to pick through them with an ohmmeter. I'm 95% sure at this point because I can run it for a while and I don't develop any hot spots on the diodes. And a shorter diode is the only thing that could really explain a low voltage on this side. With no load, I got the fuses pulled. With no load, I mean, even a blown open diode, one out of the four diodes was open. The voltage would eventually float up anyway to normal without a load. And it doesn't do that, so see the shorted, and I ran it for a while on, and then I felt the diodes. Yeah, they don't get warm. So obviously I've lost a cap already. In fact, I'm so certain at this point I'm just going to loosen those clamps and pull the whole thing as one piece and maybe replace the cap. So everything's soldered together otherwise. And that should be a good brand. This is a new one for the other channel. Yeah, it's steel put on this channel. It's a high temp cap, but... Should be a good brand, if it's real. And that's more or less the display I was expecting. If every other tooth was missing, then something would be wrong with the rectifier. So I had things all together and I noticed the caps weren't level. And I noticed one of my caps was bulging already. I figured, well, God, I put that cap in a minute ago and it's already bulged? Nope, it's the other cap. They both bulged and leaked to a new one. Of course I should have been nice to these caps and given them a slow initial charge. Considering they're 50 volt caps used in a 40 volt task, they should have lasted longer than that. Something's wrong. Shouldn't really need to be conditioned in that circumstance. So there they are, two out of two. Uh, still working though. This one went open. Not working at all. So we'll see how this pair does. They may not blow up again because it's possible that these amps saw 240 volts briefly at a generator issue. I assumed they hadn't seen the 240 volts because I thought these amps would just fry immediately if they had that big of an over voltage. But they don't have the stock transistors in the outputs anymore. So maybe they did withstand all that voltage. 